So, in case you guys didn't know, uh, 4K is here and it's here to stay. Uh, and I'm not just talking about cameras. Uh, obviously, those can shoot even you know more than 4K resolutions. But I'm talking also about uh, affordable 4K streaming, 4K monitors, uh, and even live 4K broadcasting. And speaking of 4K, uh, what I've got here today to show you guys is actually the world's first and only actually a 4K wireless video system. The unit I've got here today is the Bolt 4K from Teradek. Uh, and this is the 1500 series. Uh, and I also have the, the directional panel antenna. Now this transmitter uh, and the receiver uh, is actually rated at 1500 uh, feet. Uh, that's the distance you, you're gonna get an open line of sight. Now because more and more productions these days are actually being delivered in 4K, I think it's a good idea to look into a system like this, uh, which is going to allow you to set up a proper video village so that your, your client or director uh, can actually look at the, the image to, or the closest that is going to get to the, the final image. Uh, this is also going to be uh, helpful to first ACs, and especially because it is zero delay. Uh, so it means that they can nail that uh, focus and those crucial focus uh, marks. Now, in case you're wondering, uh, is this limited to just 4K? Obviously not. Uh, let's say if you don't have any wireless video system, but you're just kind of getting started and you're looking into getting something, I think you might as well get something, again, that's future-proof. Uh, because, like I said, when you're ready to switch to 4K, you'll be able to do that. But uh, even if right now all you're working in is HD or other resolutions in, in between that, you can still use uh, this system. And in HD, it's actually gonna give you even clearer uh, you know, f image quality, better colors, all that stuff, simply because you, you have a bigger bandwidth that the system can transmit. Teradek actually designed a brand new chipset for the Bolt 4K uh, that is gonna make it a lot more reliable uh, when it comes to handling signal interference, which at the end of the day, again, it just simply means that it can transmit a signal that's more detailed and with you know a lot more uh, accurate colors. And uh, now, in case you guys are wondering, uh, sort of the limitations of this, uh, again, it's you know f even better, like I said, than the previous Teradex systems. It's multicast capable, so it means that you can actually use one transmitter and transmit the video signal to six receivers. And not only that, but you can actually mix and match the different uh, transmitters and receivers. So, uh, like I said, the system that I have up here is the 1500, uh, but you can, let's say, let's say you have a, the 750 transmitter. Uh, again, you can use that and mix and match it with one of the 1500 receivers or vice versa. Teradek also designed a really cool and helpful app. Um, right now it's only for iOS, but uh, I've been told they're working on a version that's uh, supposed to come out soon for Android. But anyways, the app lets you do you know things like, for example, obviously change all the settings with both the transmitters and the receivers. Uh, you can use it to pair uh, the both of them together, or you can even uh, apply, for example, 3D LUTs to the output, which is very helpful because uh, I don't know about you guys, but I know me these days, I mean, I'm pretty much always shooting in some kind of a log format. and. Let's say you have your client or director, again, monitoring uh, whatever you're, you're working on. Uh, and let, maybe they have a monitor that's, that's not capable of displaying 3D LUTs. Again, you can do that within the, the wireless video system. Inside the app, you can also use the Spectrum Analyzer, uh, which is going to help you monitor the signal interference. So this way you can pick the frequencies that are best in the certain area that you're working in uh, to, again, make sure they have the best quality signal. I've had a chance to use this uh, over the last month, this whole kit here that you guys are seeing. And actually, I, I got the whole kit, which comes with the case, all the cables and, you know, power cables, video signals, all that stuff. Uh, I have two receivers. Again, this the system that I got is the 1500. So I've got two identical receivers, uh, one transmitter, and then I also have this, the, again, the array antenna. Uh, and I'll kind of talk about the difference in when maybe you might want to use one, one or the other. Uh, in a minute, but maybe first let me actually show you the long-range outdoor test that I did uh, Which I usually do with all of my wireless systems before I start using it on uh, on any professional job All right, so now for the long range I'm gonna just walk back up there and first is gonna be open line of sight and then afterwards I'll go behind some buildings uh, I've got the receiver up here uh, powered by a VMOD battery and via an HDMI cable It's connected to my monitor. I'm also recording everything that I see up here on my GoPro so you guys can see in real time what I'm seeing. Uh, I, the camera I'm using is the Blackmagic Packet 6K camera and I'm also sending out the signal via HDMI 
to the uh, transmitter over there and let's see how it goes so I'm about a hundred feet away right now hundred feet away and the signal looks really good there's no, no difference whatsoever so I'm 300 feet away I can barely see myself here in the shot uh, so yeah 300 feet away uh, here I am I'm gonna wave with my leg <laughs> and anyways I'm gonna keep on walking because it's still looking perfect okay so here I am 400 feet away and I'm still getting a signal and looks like it's perfectly uh, basically clean signal no difference still so I'll keep walking away even further and I'm 500 feet away 500 feet away this is still how it looks and we got a whole bunch of dogs barking now so don't mind the background noise <laughs> now I'm going behind the buildings so behind one house and still getting good signal here and I'm at 700 feet oh lost the signal yep trying to trying to see if that helps nope I lost the signal looks like it's not coming back so okay so I'm gonna turn back so now I'm gonna do the same test but using the direction antenna so actually the panel array antenna helps by focusing the direction of the signal so now 200 feet no problem the signal looks good and I'm gonna go a bit further here and now I'm at 300 feet 300 feet still getting perfect signal and I'm at 500 feet away 500 feet away I don't know if you guys can see me because I can barely see myself here on the screen but yeah perfect signal so I'm gonna go further and I'm at 700 feet behind the building still getting a signal and looks perfect oh but uh, yeah it's kind of cutting in and out and I believe I've lost the signal so no signal now to be honest I actually ran out of space in the, the area that I was at because I just simply didn't have enough open space to, to really test out the open line of sight uh, but again you probably or I'm guessing most people are probably never gonna push these systems to the max in open line of sight because you're usually filming with you know with something in the interfering or some buildings or walls or something like that so if you're wondering uh, whether it's actually possible to get the advertised 1500 feet uh, of distance using the the standard antennas or the array antenna then yes you you can but again it's only in ideal conditions where there's you know perfect open line of sight but in the real world we're you're always going to be shooting behind some kind of walls or things like that uh, and also we're going to be shooting in areas where there's going to be interference, right? Other um, networks, other signals, basically, that might be uh, interfering, uh, causing interference or causing certain, basically, problems in the frequency that you're working in. Uh, now, for just for your, I'll tell you for practical reasons, uh, this system, like we just did the standard antenna, is, I think, for me, I mean, plenty enough of, of range. And uh, what I mean by that is like if you're shooting a film, whether it's narrative or you know TV work or stuff like that, or maybe a live event, and you have a small venue or again you're on a film set, uh, if it's going to be plenty of power. So I don't think you have to worry about it with that. When would you want to use the the array antenna? Well, the antenna is first of all it's very directional. It's not like this. Like these, you know, antennas are maybe not as long range, but they're going to pick up basically the signal from all directions. This uh, receiver antenna is very directional, meaning you have to point it at the actual uh, transmitter. I think this antenna is a great thing, but maybe more for broadcast, like maybe you're in a big stadium or something and you got multiple cameras and again, you want to be able to just point this at the different, uh, let's say, cameras that are out in the field or something or in between the audience and then you'll be able to, to use this and get nice crisp 4K uh, signal. Now the way that you use this antenna is pretty straightforward. You take actually one of the receivers uh, and it has a V-mount battery up here, uh, like a dummy mount. Uh, so you would actually put it in here where you have a built-in V-mount battery or if you buy the, the Anton Bauer ba battery, obviously you would have that battery mount. Uh, you just slide it on there 
and then instead of actually using these standard antennas you would take these antennas out and you connect uh, little cables basically to the connections here on top of the ar array uh, antenna and then you would put your v-mount battery to power the receivers uh, here and because it's basically send sending the signal it means that both the uh, the receiver but also the array antenna is going to be powered off of one v-mount battery and this is actually something that i really like just overall about the design of this is that uh, if you don't care about it you can get the version without the built-in uh, battery plate but i like this because even the transmitter uh, has that already like for example again i, I went with the v-mount because that's that's what i have on my cameras uh, so it's really cool because i can use this now to basically kind of put my transmitter kind of sandwich it between my camera and uh, and the battery because again i'm putting this on the back of my camera and then on the on the back of the teradec here i'm going to put my v-mount battery and that one v-mount battery now is powering both the transmitter and my camera and to be honest for me this was uh, very helpful because then when i'm working with a bigger cinema camera it doesn't basically it makes it easier to build a camera rig that's not overly big and complicated so i can still move fairly fast with it and everything like that because again you're just adding literally the thickness of this uh, transmitter uh, to the kit i don't have to add any extra arms or things like that uh, to have to mount this somewhere now obviously if you're working with a smaller camera like i for example use this with the uh, black magic uh, packet 6k camera also uh, then you can still use it that way it has a quarter 20 mount here on the bottom uh, and then you can use uh, obviously a magic arm or whatever it is that you want to use it to mount it to the camera or, or your tripod uh, and then again you can power it using the Vion battery which is what I did uh, but you could actually power it you know using for example the limo connections there's different ways that you can do this uh, and then uh, again you can have a fairly small package that again gives you a reliable long-range 4k uh, wireless video system uh, so now I'm going to do the lag test. So I've got this monitor connected directly to the camera through SDI uh, and also uh, this transmitter here is connected through SDI. Here I have the receiver and that's uh, providing the video signal to this monitor. So you can kind of compare the, how it looks between this monitor and that monitor if there's any delay. And this is the test here. Now, getting back to the whole 4K thing, uh, is it really worth it? Again, I personally think it is because uh, you're you're future-proofing yourself. So even, again, if maybe right now you can't afford uh, a 4K production monitor because I know they're very expensive. Uh, I'll let you guys know that those things can change very quickly. And, and actually, um, a Small HD just announced uh, uh, 4K production monitors that are going to be a lot more affordable than those other uh, you know, options from Canon or, or Sony, for example. Uh, so again, you'd be surprised, but very quickly things can change where uh, it's just going to become normal, I think, everyday occurrence when you're working uh, on, a, on a production where you're going to want to monitor in 4K. So... Again, that's when buying a system like this is going to make sure that you can you can use that not just for the next few months, but uh, the next few years down the line. Anyways, that's it for this video. Uh, if you guys want more information about the Bolt 4K, then as always, you can follow the links in the description of this video or head on over to my website at tomantasfilms.com. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter so you stay up to date with uh, all the latest gear reviews, filmmaking tutorials, and uh, a whole bunch of other cool stuff. My name is Tom Antos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.